In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this 3D text. I'll be using Blender version 2.64. So to start, we'll create a new project. So go to the File menu and select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. And then come over here to this drop-down menu and select Cycles Render. Older versions of Blender may not have the Cycles Render engine but you can go to blender.org to download the latest version of Blender if you need to. And now we're going to delete this cube here. So right click on it to make sure that it's selected and then press the delete key on the keyboard and then select delete. And then come up to the add menu and select mesh and plane. And this is going to be the surface that our text will be sitting on. And we're going to scale the size of this. So press the S key to scale and then moving your mouse scales this, but we can also enter a value in directly. So I'm going to type 30 and then press the Enter key. And then next we're going to add some text. So come up here to the Add menu and select Text. And let's zoom in on this text, and you can zoom by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. And then grab this arrow right here to move the text up a little bit. And then we're going to rotate the text. So press the R key on your keyboard. And then if you move your mouse, you can see this rotating. And we want to rotate this just on the X axis. So press the X key. And now we're rotating just on the X axis. And we can rotate this by moving the mouse or we can enter a value in directly. And I want to rotate this by 90 degrees. So I'm going to type 90 and then press the Enter key. And now I'm going to rotate the view, and I can do that by pressing and holding the middle mouse button, and then move the mouse to rotate this. And then to change this text, we go to Edit Mode, and you can do that by coming down here and clicking on this menu, and then select Edit Mode. And now you can see that we have a cursor here next to the text. So I'm just going to hit the backspace key a few times to delete this text, and then I'll type in Blender and then come back down to this menu again and select Object Mode. And then next we're going to add some more text. So come over here to the Add menu and select Text. And then we can move this up a little bit. And then just like before, we're going to rotate this text. So press R to rotate, and then press X to rotate it on the X axis. And then to rotate this 90 degrees, I'm just going to type 90, and then press the Enter key. And let's move this text over to the side. And then to change this text, we go to Edit Mode, and then I'll delete this text, and then I'm going to type Blender again. And then come back down here, open this menu, and select Object Mode. The reason that I created this text two times is because this text right here is going to be the main text and this text right here I'm going to use it as a light source. So we're going to make this text transparent and then we're going to light it from behind using the light source text. So now I'll zoom in so we can see this text better and again I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom and then I can pan the view over to the side if I press the shift key and then press and hold the middle mouse button and then just drag this over with the mouse. And now I can make some changes to this font. So I'll come over here and first I'm going to expand this a little bit. And If you come over here you'll see a button with an F on it and this will allow me to change characteristics of my font. So after pressing it come down here to the geometry section and we can use extrude to give this text some depth. So I'm just going to click on this and then type in 0.15 and then press enter. And if you see up here now our text looks 3D. And then next I'm going to add a bevel to this text and you can do that right here. So I'll just click on depth and then enter in 0.05 and then press enter. And you'll see that that bevels the edges around the text. And you'll also notice that it makes the individual characters wider so that they start to touch each other. So we can fix that by changing the offset value. 
And if you decrease the offset, then the letters start to become thinner. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a value in here. So I'll click this and then I'll type minus 0 0.03 and then press enter. And now let's set the material for this text. So come up here and click on the material button and then click here where it says new. And if you have a menu that looks completely different from this, it could be that you don't have cycles render selected. And you select cycles render up here. So for example, if I were to select blender render, you can see that this looks completely different. So come up here and make sure that you have cycles render selected. And then for the surface value, click on this and select glass. And then click on the color and let's set this for a reddish color. And then for the roughness value, click on this and set this to 0.2. And this will make our glass look like it's not completely clear. And then next, let's select the text that we're going to use as our light source. So we can pan our view, and remember to do that, hold down the shift key, and then press the middle mouse button on your mouse, and then drag the view over. And then to select this text, right click on the text, and then we're going to set the material. So just click on new, and then for the surface value, click here and choose emission. And this will allow this text to emit light. And the amount of light that it emits depends upon the strength value. And so I'm going to increase the strength just a little bit. So click on this and type in 1.5 and then press enter. So let's come over here now and zoom out. And then select our text over here on the left by right clicking on it. And now I'm going to be changing the view by pressing some keys on the number pad. In Blender, the numbers on the right side number pad are different than the numbers on top of the keyboard. So when I press a number to change the view, I'm using the right side number pad. If you're using a computer that does not have a right side number pad, then you can use the view menu down here and use these other selections in place of the number pad. So if I press number one on the number pad, this will give me a front view, but if I hold down the control key while I press number one, then that'll give me a back view. And it's the back view that I'm going to be using right now. And we can also switch between perspective view and orthogonal view by pressing the number five key on the number pad. We're currently in perspective mode, so I'm going to press number five to put us in orthogonal view. And now I'll pan this view and then I'll zoom in. And what we're going to be doing is to align this text that we're going to use as our light source right behind this main text here. So right click on this text over here to select it. And then we can use the arrows to move this over. And then I'll press the number three key so that we can get a side view of this. And then using this arrow right here, we can pull this text off to the back side and then hold down the control key and press the number one on the number pad. And that'll bring us back to our back view. And then let's pan this over a little bit again. And then I'll zoom in. And then I'll use these arrows here to line this text up. And this looks good. And then rotate the view off to the side and then use this arrow here to pull this text in until it just touches the main text and then overlaps it by just a little bit. So just like that. So now this text that we just added to the backside here is going to be the light source and this light then will shine through this main text. So let's go ahead and rotate this around so that we can see the front side. So now let's set the material for the plane that this text will be sitting on. So right click on the plane to select it and then come over here and click on new. And then for the surface, click on this button and select mix shader. And this will allow us to mix two different shaders together. So for the first shader, click right here and select diffuse. And then click on the color and we're going to set this to a blue color. And then for the second shader, click right here and select glossy. And then click on the color 
and pull this down until you get to about the middle of the grayscale. And then here for the roughness, set this to zero. So now we've set the material for the text and the plane. By default, all of this background area here will be rendered as a gray color, but we can change that by coming over here and clicking on the world button and then click on color and then set this to black. And now let's move this plane into position. So press the one key on the number pad to bring us into front view and then let's zoom out on this and then we'll pan the view over to the side and then we can just grab this arrow right here and move this plane up until it's just under the text. And now let's move the camera into its approximate position. So press 7 on the number pad to bring us into top view and then zoom out and pan the view and then select the camera by right clicking on it and then you can use this arrow to move the camera over to the left and then press R to rotate the camera and then this will rotate with the mouse but we want to rotate it 45 degrees so I'm just going to type 45 and then press enter. Now to see our scene as viewed through the eye of the camera press 0 on the number pad. And then you can zoom in on this view by using the scroll wheel and we can move our scene around while looking through the camera if we make a change to the properties. To do this come down to the view menu and select properties and then come over here and click the box next to lock camera to view. And then we can shut this menu off by coming back here to the view menu and select properties again. And now we can rotate, pan, and zoom to position our text. So let's do that. And my zoom using the scroll wheel here isn't very good. By scrolling just one click, my zoom goes from this position to this position. And I want to set this in between these two zoom levels. So another way to zoom is to press and hold the control key and then press the middle mouse button and then just move the mouse up and down. So I'm going to zoom this to this position right here. And if you'll notice the edge of this plane right here, it slopes a little bit up and to the right. And so I want to rotate the camera until this is horizontal. So press R on the keyboard. So then you can use the mouse to rotate the camera. And I'm going to rotate it to this position right here. Now let's render the image to see what we have so far. So come over here and click on the render button that looks like a camera. Without changing any of the settings, click on the render button so that we can get a quick look at our scene. If you're using a version of Blender earlier than version 2.64, then this button may be called Image instead of Render. Now this image looks grainy, and this is because it wasn't rendered with very many samples, but we can use it to get a general idea of how our image will look. And everything looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and render it with more samples. And to do this, scroll down to this area right here that says Sampling. And if you're using a version of Blender earlier than version 2.64, then this section may be called Integrator. So go ahead and open up this section, and then right here you should see Samples. And the number of render samples is currently set to 10. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to 1,000 samples. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now sometimes when you render an image, you may end up with a few bright pixels at places in the image where they should not be so bright. These unwanted bright pixels are sometimes referred to as fireflies. To help reduce the number of fireflies, we can set a clamp value. And I like to set this value to 0.98. So now let's render the image again with these new settings. So we'll just come back up here and click on the render button. If after pressing the render button, you decide that you want to abort the render process before it has completed, then just press the escape key. 
Now since I set the number of samples to 1000, this is going to take a while to render. So while it's rendering, I'm going to pause the video and then I'll come back when it's finished. The image has finished rendering now. So to save the image, make sure your cursor is over the image and then press the F3 key. This will open a window where you can specify a directory and then give your image a name. And I'm just going to name this text.png. And then come over here and press the Save As Image. And this saved my image as a PNG type image. Now if you want to save your image as a JPEG or some other file type, then you can come down here and click on this button to change the file type. And then just place the cursor over the image again and then press F3. Then you can select a new file name. And as a final step, we should save our project. So to do that, come up to the File menu and select Save As. And then you can give your project a file name. And I'm just going to call this text.blend. And Blend is the file extension that Blender uses. And then just click on the button called Save As Blender File. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.